I'm George Fowler. You might know me as uh, Hugo Girl. And if you would like to be a talented and perhaps semi-professional transvestite, keep listening. I am not an expert in drag. It is my favorite thing. It is what I do for a job. But I can't imagine doing anything else. That doesn't make me an expert in it. But what I reckon I am pretty educated in is weirdly this. Like I run a uh, local queer, um, mostly drag based little events company. And so we are lots of drag performers first stage spot. We run uh, drag events at a pretty amateur level if I do say so myself. So I've seen lots of drag people get started uh, and I have um, some pretty good tips about what works and what doesn't. So stay tuned to be partial to all of that information. Okay, so tip number one is uh, to just fucking do it, mates. A frustrating conversation I have too often is like, wow, I would just love to do drag. Just do it. I really passionately believe that drag is a calling and when you see great drag characters out and about or on stage, there's something that's just like, that the person just can't not do it. And by do it, I mean uh, put on makeup and prance around in your bedroom and in my case, hump your bedroom mirror for months before leaving the house and also go out. So go out, dressed up, introduce yourself to other drag performers and producers, and congratulations, you're doing drag. Beyond that, uh, ask for gigs, tell people that you're looking for gigs, ask for, in New Zealand we have stage kittens or stage hands, which I'm sure they have everywhere in some capacity, and those are really great starting out positions to ask for. And if that doesn't work big, just be like, no, definitely give me a spot. I once had a drag performer pretty much just like turn up and I didn't know that I was giving her her first spot and she did amazing and now I book her all the time. Tip number two is be aggressively yourself, which sounds very Oprah-y, but bear with me. So if you follow your instincts and just move to music you adore in ways that come very naturally to you, something really entertaining and original is probably gonna like fall out of your body and onto stage. So just uh, be yourself, don't overanalyze it, don't worry about branding or what other people are gonna think. Just, um, you know, it should happen very organically. A bonus tip. But tip number two is stop fucking watching Drag Race. Now, controversial, I know, but bear with me. So, uh, you want your creation of a character and maybe your first act to be, like, cool and unique to you. And a really great way to muddy that creative process and ensure that something that comes out of you is, like, over-influenced by uh, what is considered popular or what is considered, like, the best kind of drag. Um, a really great way to do that is to just, like, cram your brain with lots of other references so i recommend while you are creating just to like give yourself a bit of space uh and you will not become a generic drag performer that's my theory anyway tip number three thou shalt know thy words when i own a venue and it's going to happen one day i'm going to get that like a giant embroidery carpet of that just in the dressing room thou shalt know thy words Rosie, I'm sorry, I just want to give people the education. Yeah. There's lots of bonus tips and Best other tips. tips. So other tips are uh, when you lip sync, open your uh, mouth and eyes. Uh, a real good way to know that you're not doing this is when you see photos of yourself and you're doing this. Opening your mouth and eyes will make the words look clearer and will also help you emote. Pro tip is lip sync your breaths. If you want to seem like you are actually singing and involved in the song, you want to... And that also helps the song really get in your body and make it a very convincing lip sync. Often what a great drag performer is described as having is X Factor, right? And no one really knows what X Factor is or what stage presence really means, but there's a couple of ways that you can cheat it. So the next couple of tips are about that. Tip number four is about gaze. That's G-A-Z-E, stop it. Shallow and long gaze, like the way that you look at your audience, um, really, really helps with engagement and storytelling. So I reckon within your first minute of being on stage, you should acknowledge the people directly close to you on both the left and the right and the people far away on the left and the right. Often you'll literally see drag performers do a little move which is like bam, 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 
bam, um, you know the little points thing? There's a reason for that, because suddenly you have the intention of the entire room. So pretty much what this tip is, is just look at your fucking audience. This one actually comes from my tech, uh, Pierce Barber, who I use for all my shows, and he's amazing and lovely. Uh, but often he'll come backstage after a show and he'll be like, that performer was mean. They do the fingertips thing. And what it is, is like, if you energize your fingertips and your eyes, magic happens, right? So often he'll be referring to a performer who does like this, or like, you know, like your hands are like, there's like energy all the way to the end of your fingertips and same thing with your eyes they're just you're just like present and it makes a huge difference a great way to make sure you're doing this is like just to do a little warm-up backstage be like bah, bah, which is a uh, theater school wank but it works doesn't it um and um if you'd like to be considered an energetic and powerful and engaging performer it's all about the fingertips it's all about the eyes very simple when it comes down to it huh Tip number six, we're on to act construction. Dun dun dun. You might edit together immediately about songs about candy, you might wear pink, and at the end you pull out a lollipop out of your pants. <laughs> Done, that is a solid act. It doesn't need to be more complicated than that. And in fact, when you try and overcomplicate, especially when you're just getting started, the story gets a little bit muddled, you know? Keep it simple, there's no shame in doing it. The best performers, you know? They do Eye of the Tiger dressed up like a tiger and everyone's like, yes, you know? It doesn't need to be more complicated than that. If the pros do it, you can too. Make it match, baby! Tip number seven is beginning, middle and end. How do you make a nice, satisfying sense of energy and direction and how do you create a good story? You stick to the classic old trio structure. It doesn't need to be all different songs, but let's say it is. So you pick a nice chill song, you spend like a minute like coming on and introducing yourself to the audience. Maybe you do the thing where you acknowledge lots of different areas of the audience. Uh, middle, <gasps> something has changed for our protagonist. Is it a music cut? Have things got a little bit sexier? Good Goodness gracious me. End of the act, generally about two thirds through, a little, little further than two thirds through, is when you do your like climax or reveal. It can be proper costume related, it could be a death drop, it could be like a concept reveal. Um, uh, an incredible drag queen in Wellington called Just Beth uh, did a beautiful lip sync to Shallows and then her reveal was like stripping off into like ugly swim suit gear and like swimming off into the audience. See? It's a good reveal. Tip number eight uh, is all about preparation. So you're like, wow, they're so good and so polished. You know how you get there is your practice. A really easy way of doing this is to rehearse with your props and costume and rehearse with your words. It makes me mad when backstage, like particularly usually it's drag queens who like put on a corset and heels and suddenly can't do the routine that they had in their head and were doing in their living room. There's a reason for that. Rehearse with your costume, rehearse with your tits bound. I know that sucks, but it's gonna inform the way you move. It's gonna inform your character. Um, it's gonna make or break your routine when it happens. Rehearse with all the bits and pieces. Number nine is a huge pet peeve of mine. Drum roll please, props. Okay, so props should be oversized and overused. You bring a birthday cake on, within, by the end of the act, it better be all over you, right? And then if you bring something on, you better use it in literally every single way that prop can be used. You look at people who do burlesque, like a, a boa, the incredibly innovative ways that they manage to use a boa on stage. They don't just have it draped around their shoulders for six minutes. It's being pounded into the floor. It's being swung around. Uh, it's being touched in all sorts of different ways. There's a sense of satisfaction with co that comes with when you're like, <gasps> What's this? What are all the ways I can use this and tease it? Number 10 is fuck it up. Yes! You're gonna do art stuff. You're gonna do things in public on stage. Bitch, you better be ready to fail. Yes! Get ready to make mistakes and do them publicly and uh, revel and celebrate in the process of learning and growing that that entails. Not every act is going to be perfect. The Instagram culture fucks us up, man. All we see is the finished product and the finished product that has been edited. In real life, 
you're gonna fall over on stage. You're gonna like learn some tough things about costuming because it's gonna fall off your body at a really inconvenient time. I love watching acts that are messy, you know, like you can make an act that's like polished and beautiful and guaranteed to stick, but it's probably not gonna be that entertaining. I'd much rather see someone go out and just like be dripping in sweat at the end of it, having given everything. It's everything's just torn up and shrewn everywhere, but it was fucking entertaining and someone gave it heaps. Fuck it up, my friends. Something to consider if you're getting started in drag is storage. You, if you have a normal human being's amount of stuff and you're about to start drag, it is about to double if not triple. So invest in little bed risers and Ziploc plastic bags and click plaque big storage plastic containers. Don't fuck around on your storage. If you would like to have a functional uh, bedroom, if you would like to be able to find anything ever, if you would like to have a sexual partner over at any point in the time period in which you are doing drag, storage my friends. All right, it's been a pleasure. Uh, if you would like to disagree with me in the comments, come at me bro, let's fight. Uh, also, as is evidenced by this video, I make whatever you ask me for, so just ask me for information and then I will talk at you and deliver it to you by the medium of the internet and we will share our knowledge and education and passion for this weird fucking art form and continue to be the edifices of faggotry that we are. I'm undercaffeinated. Goodbye. <laughs>